Okay, I wanted to put together a short little movie that talks about some of the things that we can do to expand the use of PowerPoint. I think when most of us think about what PowerPoint can do, we of course think about it as a presentation tool. But it's also for those of us that really don't have any hope of learning Adobe Flash or those kind of products, it's also a very rudimentary animation tool. It can also be used as kind of a quick and easy way to generate audio PowerPoints or narratives to your PowerPoints. And it can also be used to generate podcasts or movies that students can put on their iPods or just movies that can be put up to the web. I'd also like to talk about some of the other ways that we can expand PowerPoint as a presentation tool. For one, we can make non-linear presentations. One of the weaknesses of PowerPoint is it tends to be very slide after slide after slide. And we can try and break that up a little bit with a couple of techniques. We can also use clickers. It's something that I really, really like. It helps to engage the student in the actual PowerPoint by asking them to respond to multiple choice questions. I have a variety of reasons why I think clickers are a very, very valuable addition to the use of PowerPoint. I'm going to talk about that as an organizational tool. I'll also talk about something called the smooth board, the Wii smooth board, a way that you can stand at the screen while you present. So students are looking at you and looking at what you're presenting right at the same time, not going back and forth between some podium. Obviously, this is a little bit like a wireless mouse, but it has some advantages and some disadvantages to that technique. I'm going to go into organization, back to organization here. I want to talk about how it's a way to organize video content from the web, newspaper articles, and then web content. Jumping down to animation, I want to point out something called PowerPoint Heaven that I think is a valuable site to look at. It kind of expands our understanding of what PowerPoint can do. I want to talk about motion paths. I'm talking about gameplay and quizzing. Most of us have seen Jeopardy on PowerPoint at this point, but you can also generate your own little quizzes. And I want to talk about scenario solving as well. I'm going to talk about podcasting. One of the easiest ways to do this is just to record audio right with PowerPoints. Talk about podcasting, turning that PowerPoint with audio into a podcast. i also talk about how with podcasting you can create differentiated instructions. So instruction for those more advanced students, something for them to tackle if they're a little bored with the regular course material. Where I want to start is up here at nonlinear. And kind of the way I'm presenting this already demonstrates a nonlinear use of PowerPoint. That that star diagram before is used the smart art, and basically what it's doing is creating an index that I can click on. Another thing that I've got down here at the bottom that may help, but can also be awfully distracting, is I've got an index that can move in and out of the PowerPoint. So say you want to organize, or you want to demonstrate to your students that there's clearly a very organized subject matter that you're covering, then you can jump from slide to slide with the index. So again, it creates kind of a, a definite organization that the student is going to follow. So another thing besides just spider maps is you can also create links through concept maps. So I use a lot of concept mapping in my class. This is going to take me out to a PowerPoint that I use. And now when I click on certain areas, it's going to take me to just that area. So if the student wants to review basic anatomy, they can do that. And then there's a tiny little button down here that takes me back to the concept map. So they can go to the area that talks about congestive heart failure and then back to the concept map. Or maybe they want to do vessels. They can click here and it'll take them through the vessels. And then again, they can go back to the concept map. So again, they don't have to go through the PowerPoint exactly linearly. Standing at the screen, It's a movie called, uh, it's a movie by a man named Johnny Chung who's developed, let's just say, unique uses of the Nintendo Wii remotes. I'm going to skip ahead to about. Hi. My so make sure you're back far enough to see the whole screen, but not too far back because otherwise you'll lose tracking resolution. Once I connect the Wiimote to the computer over Bluetooth, I can do a standard four-point touch calibration like they do on most electronic whiteboards. What this does is it maps the camera coordinates to the projector coordinates, and now the cursor will show up wherever my pen is, and I can simulate a mouse and draw on a drawing program or manipulate my windows.
One nice thing about using the Wemo to do this is any surface I can project onto, I can basically turn into an interactive whiteboard. Now what I have here is a projector mounted onto a tripod, which is kind of a generally useful thing to do anyway. Um, and it's now pointing at this tabletop. And the Wemo is actually attached to the projector, so we can have this top-down view of this display. Again, after I do the four-point touch calibration, I can now use my pen just like a mouse, and I can interact with my table like it's a multi-thousand dollar interactive whiteboard. Additionally, because the Wii Remote can track up to four points simultaneously, if we use two pens, this is actually a multi-touch interactive system. If you don't happen to have a projector, you can still use the same technique with a liquid crystal display. You simply mount the Wii Remote, point it at our display, and then do our four-point touch calibration. Now we can essentially turn any liquid crystal display into a multi-touch tablet surface. So that's how, with the Nintendo Wii Remote and some infrared LED light pens, you can create your own really low-cost, multi-touch interactive whiteboard system or multi-touch tablet PC. Now, in truth, the tracking resolution you're going to get off the camera is not going to be as good as one of the commercial products, but it's pretty good and it's much, much cheaper. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you'd like to try out the software, uh, you can go to my website and download a copy and try it out for yourself. Thanks for watching. It's a reasonably good system to use, and it's very, very inexpensive. For a $40 Wii Remote, a $20 IR pen or infrared pen, then a $20 Bluetooth adapter if your computer does not have Bluetooth, you can put it all together for something like $80. In my experience, it's not really robust or accurate enough to write reasonably on the screen, but it's definitely a way to present while you're standing at the screen. So you're not running back to a computer, you're right there where the students are hopefully looking.